Welcome to the second video related to black and white photography. Today I'm going to share with you tips. As I told you in the previous video, I shared with you some mistakes that I think people are doing when they are converting their photos to black and white, or better said, when it's not appropriate to convert your images to black and white. There were some people that didn't agree with me. It's fine, it's okay, it's photography, everyone is entitled to their opinion as long as their images are okay. Now, my thoughts on black and white photography is that black and white, it's an option. You can do it in color or you, or you can do it in black and white. And whenever you want to uh, present the photo as a black and white image, uh, the black and white version should be better than color version. This is my personal opinion. You may have different opinions. There are people that prefer to photograph everything in black and white and they don't think it uh, they don't think about it like this, but this is my way of thinking. So, in this video I will show you some of my black and white photos. The reason I don't post those photos, uh, it's related to uh, the algorithm, the way the algorithm of Facebook, Instagram or Instagram works. I'll talk about briefly in the end of this video uh, about this matter, but right now I'm gonna share with you some of my black and white images and I'm going to talk about some tips related to black and white photography. I will uh, I will start with some landscape photos and I will tell you that if you're doing long exposures then those long exposures look really well in black and white. Usually when I'm photographing for black and white I like to pay attention to contrast between light and darkness the more contrast, the better. Um, I don't like to have lots of elements that can distract the viewer. Um, you can concentrate on texture, but again, you need a certain type of te texture. Some elements don't work well with black and white. They look just like a clutter of, uh, of things. But the thing that I think it's more important when I'm photographing for black and white is to have a clear separation between uh, composition or the rest of the elements in the photo and the subject. And whenever you have a clean separation, I think um, the photo will look better. So let's take a look at some long exposure photos. And uh, you'll see, for example, in this image, where I have the clouds uh, moving towards the peak over there. And then I have some spots of light where uh, the sunlight was shining on the mountain. Uh, another example is over here in Tuscany where I have this field and those cypress trees and I had some dramatic conditions. I did a long exposure, I captured the movement of the clouds and the chaos in that movement and I have the cypress trees in the lower left side of the, of the image. As you can see in the editing I darkened the rest of the image and kept um, an area of brightness uh, near the cypress trees and I also have the brightness in the in the clouds. Another long exposure is with a church and you're going to see this church in another example where I share with you another tip uh, also in this video. So I'm doing a long exposure um, with the clouds that are running over the church and I do this often when I have the chance to do a long exposure during the day and I have a clear subject and there is a clear separation um, of the subject from the rest of the, of the elements, I always go for um, a photo like this. And even if I don't post it as black and white, I post it uh, usually as a slightly desaturated image. Now, another uh, type of image or another situation when I think black and white works really well, when I'm photographing into the light and I have um, almost like geometrical shapes, even if we are talking about uh, landscape or cityscapes, if the geometry is there, if the lines suggest an order and, we are for, and I'm photographing into the light and uh, it's more like uh, a silhouette, it's not a complete silhouette because I don't like having um, complete black uh, elements in the photo but when when it's really dark 
and you have those elements and only the contour is uh, is visible I think in that moment the image works really well as you can see in this photo over here where uh, I have that lonely tree uh, on that slope on the um, on the rocks now another tip tip number three would be to reduce the landscape to only one element that is to focus uh, on only one element but this is not something something that you can do all the time i prefer to do this in black and white for example this photo is is done in the dolomites and in the dolomites uh, there are some particular situations the way the mountains look and also uh, the the atmospheric conditions very often the sunlight goes through the clouds and shines some light only on some peaks now if you go and convert that photo to black and white and you uh, accentuate the contrast and the difference from the areas of light between the areas of light and the areas of darkness then you get a, a very simple image where the attention of the viewer will focus on a certain on a on a single element it's almost like taking a portrait almost like taking a portrait it's a simple way to capture nature when you reduce it to only one element but i found out that this type of image that you're looking at it right now doesn't work that well in color i don't know why but maybe it's my it, it's my way of looking at at, um, at photos but the way I'm seeing the black and white version and the color version I think the black and white version looks a lot better tip number four would be to look for dramatic atmospheric moments when uh, the drama is also presented in front of you together with uh, light as you can see in this photo there's a lot happening over there there are the mountains there is fog mist uh, clouds there is light shining on some slopes now in the editing it's the the processing part when you are doing black and white i think it's very important because with the digital cameras i'm for even if i set my profile to black and white the resulted raw file it's going to be a color a color image so when when i'm looking at the image i uh, or looking at the landscape i try to visualize it as a color photo or as a black and white image and i think over time i'm a full-time landscape photographer since 2009 so over time i developed my own method or my own crit criteria there are not some elements that I can pinpoint in the list but when I see a certain type of situation in front of me I know that will work better in black and white I'm not a black and white photographer I'm primarily a color photographer but from time to time I like to edit in uh, black and white so in this situation I have a dramatic uh, atmospheric condition and I accentuated again the contrast i i darkened the areas that i didn't want the attention of the viewer to stay on and i try to focus the attention of the viewer in the center of the image in that valley where you have the clouds and you have uh, the rugged mountains now tip number five would be to try and focus on elements together with clouds now there are different situations i have multiple photos with this type of examples i included uh, some of those photos here for example i have a simple house it's in tuscany okay and i have some beautiful clouds behind it and whenever i see this i don't know why but it triggers black and white in my head and as you can see i darken the, the lower part of the image and after that comes the area of brightness that includes the house and the clouds and above the clouds the sky is black and having two areas of darkness at the base and at the top of the photo that encapsulate an area of light i think helps a lot keeping the attention 
of the viewer on the element that you want uh, their attention to be. Here's another image for, for the same example. So I'm having um, a, a vast horizontal uh, plane, if you want. And on top of that, I have a house and then I have the clouds. As you can see, I decided to frame the house right in the middle. I think that in this case, it works. It, was, it works because of the symmetry um, of, the, uh, of the two sides of the house. And then I have the dramatic clouds above it. And it creates a simple image that I think works really nice in black and white. Again, I have those areas of darkness, light, darkness, light. And again, another example where I have a small house and some really dramatic clouds. And sometimes this helps a lot with presenting proportion because you see how vast and big the clouds are. It's not always, I mean, there are areas where I didn't saw this type of clouds. For example, in the area where I live, very rarely I saw these type of clouds, but in Tuscany, all these photos were done in Tuscany. In Tuscany, this, I, I don't know why, but it happens. It happens a lot. And you also have those houses on top of, uh, of the hills. And as you drive, you see those houses and they present to you a really unique opportunity to capture a really simple moment of the hill, the house, the clouds, and then you can darken the sky. Tip number six is look for simple compositions. I think black and white works really well when your composition is as simple as possible. Condition number one. Condition number two, there are strong differences between light and darkness. This is what I prefer to have. You may, you may do it in another way. There are a lot of black and white photos that look okay, don't have this contrast between light and darkness. But this is my way of doing I mean these are the things that I like to photograph okay the difference the, the big differences in light and darkness and uh, condition number three which is optional is to have really dramatic atmosphere and as you can see in this photo I have the mountains I have a really dark uh, ridge at the top of the photo that adds dimension adds adds depth to the image and after that comes the mountain in the distance with this mist around it and of course at the top I include another area of darkness just to keep your attention on the mountain below. Again another example for this tip to keep it simple. Again I have a really imposing mountain and this mist uh, that it's leaving the, the edge of the rock. This is happening after the rain. So if it's raining and you are in the Dolomites you just go into the, uh, uh, into the car and drive and wait over there in the mountains for the rain to stop. When it's going to stop, this is going to happen. Again, I have some really dark ridges and those, um, those ridges create depth in the image. Another example, keep it simple. As I told you, in the Dolomites there are often occasions when you have the light going through the clouds only on some um, elements of the mountain. Now, in real life, it doesn't look that dramatic, of course, because the dynamic range of the eye is different. But if you see the potential of what something could be, you could end up with an image like this, a very simple composition, only a spot of light. And I think because of that spot of light, this photo looks almost surreal. That is why I made the decision to convert it to black and white. Black and white, it's not a representation of reality. It's not. There are not the colors are not there, the contrast, it's completely different. So when I'm editing for black and white, and when I'm presenting you an image of black and in black and white, I'm not presenting you the reality. I'm showing you what that reality could be. Uh, through the eyes of my own imagination. Again, keep it simple. We, we have 
some some uh, some ridges some some uh, some mountains and this type of image is very easy to do when you're photographing into the light because the contrast is really big the definition the details are, are small uh, and you can have this type of effect now the reason for which I took this photo was that cloud it almost like it, it looks like it's almost bouncing from that uh, peak over there and uh, it's simple it's a simple image it has big uh, high contrast and your attention goes to the cloud directly tip number seven when I have roads that take you somewhere that is also for me a good moment to photograph but also to convert the image to black and white you have this simple a simple road that uh, winds itself through the hills and goes to that property over there or you have this dramatic this, this really dramatic moment where the road starts to the left goes up to the right and then your attention is turned a little bit to the left to the house again I think I'm I will uh, I will speak at this uh, about this again and again throughout this video dramatic atmospheric conditions and really strong differences in light and darkness for me are elements that trigger uh, this desire to present the photo in black and white again a simple road that goes to a house and again you notice those areas of darkness and light that encapsulate so well the the areas of darkness encapsulate the areas of light or for example this road over here where I also decided to darken the first part of the road and to have a different luminosity on the road that it goes into the background it's a very simple way to direct the attention to uh, to where the road is going if uh, if the the part of the road that it's really close to the viewer it's uh, just entering in the photo is left with the same brightness it looks a little bit off because it's a big area that it, it has a really high uh, luminosity and it kind of attracts the eye tip number eight now we're moving on from landscape photography towards other types of photography because uh, there are areas where I'm organizing workshops in Romania there are historic areas like Maramures or Bukovina these are uh, these two areas have a different type of photographic opportunities for example this photo is made in Maramures and this is the traditional custom uh, that people wore of course that these days they're not walking the streets dressed like this but you can find people that have traditional old costumes and they are willing to dress for a photo shoot so I have this girl over here and I'm posing it near uh, the window I very uh, rarely use artificial light in my portraits usually I'm doing documentary type of images but just in uh, just like in in the landscape where i really like dramatic conditions and light to be dramatic this is the same thing with uh with portraits so in this case i just pose the subject uh near the uh, near the window because i uh, i really like that light and then i slightly turn the face of the uh, of the subject so that it also have a little bit of light on this other half of the face and I'm exposing of course for the areas that are highlighted by the light and then you get this really dramatic uh, portrait tip number nine is to um, use black and white in documentary type of photos now there are situations when black and white works really well to present the image again this is the reason for which i am using black and white if the situation in front of me is better presented in color for example if i'm going to spain to photograph the 
the tomato festival, I think it's called, when they when people are battling with tomatoes, or if I'm going to India to photograph that festival where they are using colorful um, powder, then at, at those festivals, I'm not going to use black and white. Those festivals are about color, but if I'm documenting, for example, uh, the Easter procession in uh, Romania or the Easter procession in Italy, Sicily. Those are moments when it's all about what is happening, not the colors and how the people are dressed. And by taking away some information that is not useful, I think I better present a moment. Over here, uh, I photographed this person. The, he is traditionally doing um, a drink that is called palinka in Maramures. It's, tra it's, it's a traditional drink in that area of the country and he's doing it the old way in his home and I wanted to, to capture that. Again I'm looking for um, dramatic light. The reason for which I stay I stayed in this position and photographed over there was because I knew the minute it's going to lift the lid, steam is going to come out. And if I'm looking at the steam and after this, that steam is the light bulb, then the steam is going to light up from the light of the light bulb and it's going to look interesting. So it was an intentionally position. Tip number 10 is when you are photographing in cities, often look for um, areas of darkness that lead uh, your attention towards light. For example, in this situation, there are some stairs, there are some buildings, and I framed that tower from Siena, Tuscany. Uh, again, I'm, uh, I'm on, a, on a dark alley. Um, uh, from uh, from a town in um, in Tuscany, a town that is called Pitigliano, and I'm always looking for these dark alleys that are leading your attention towards uh, some light in the distance. Again, in this situation here, and I intentionally included that lid in the lower part of the image. I thought that. Placing that lid in darkness created a really powerful contrast. You don't necessarily need to be uh, outside. You can also have, be inside. For example, this is a church in Montepulciano in Tuscany. And I, um, I have some light entering a window and shining on those uh, shrines over there or on that shrine over there. And it looks really well. When you have only one element and light and the rest in darkness, that is the moment when I think you should always photograph. Again, the situation. This is, this is the church that in the beginning of this video I showed you with the long exposure. Well, just three steps uh, behind, I entered under this uh, archway and I frame it from darkness towards light. Now, the thing that I had to pay attention was the distance between the columns, the rest of the columns, I didn't want it for uh, for the viewer to see light between those columns. And I position it in a way that you only see the columns and no light between them. This way you focus your attention only on the church. Again, in the town of Montepulciano, you have an, an alley, an archway, and then something is happening. And this is a very simple composition. And again, falls under those rules that I told you about. I want to have darkness, I want to have light and a, a big contrast between these two. And a simple, uh, the simple composition works better. Now you can also have another tip. You can also have um, almost like geometrical constructions inside towns. Now, for example, in this situation i really liked how the column went down and you have a small market uh, a small balcony over there or market or whatever it is but the reason for going for black and white is i wanted you to focus on the on the actual element of the building 
I didn't want you to focus on on the color. You don't have much color in in uh, in these kind of towns, but it can take away some of the some of the uh, some of the attention. So whenever I want to to go, to to photograph the geometry geometry in inside towns because you have a lot of straight lines. I go for uh, black and white. Inside uh, inside towns, you also have moments when you can photograph, and my moments, I mean the architecture together with with the people. For example, I was here in this town uh, from Tuscany, and the rain started. So uh, I stayed in this area over here with the with the entire group. Uh, this was done during one of my workshops in Tuscany. If you're interested in May 2022, uh, I have another workshop in Tuscany. The link is in the description of this video. It's on my website. So I position here, I have uh, one stair coming from the right and another one from the left. I knew at a certain point some person will pass by. It was inevitable. So I just waited there and took this photo. Again, um, it's it's a geometrical construction over here, and there are some areas of light. For example, in the lower part of the photo, on that uh, alley that goes away from the photo, that was a little bit of light over there, and then some light coming from above. And I asked one of the participants from the workshop to just uh, climb the stairs, and it added so much more to the photo. I watched, for example, the stairs until someone with an umbrella went by. So these kind of moments, I think, work, work really well in, in black and white because you are able to focus only on the element that you are interested in. Or, for example, this situation where I have different levels and the photo, the, the photo first of all, it has depth and it also has an element of uh, attention. So, um, again, if you want to take just some simple things from this video, first of all, have this is my own preference again because people are commenting. This is my way of doing things. Uh, I'm looking for high contrast between light and darkness, I'm looking for simplicity. I'm looking for interesting elements placed in that light. And if I'm in the landscape, I'm looking for dramatic landscape. Now, I told you that um, I'm going to tell you why I'm not posting black and white images on my Instagram account, for example. It's because the algorithm is built in a way that if I'm posting, uh, mo if more, most of my photos are, for example, foggy forests, landscape in Tuscany, landscapes from the Dolomites, landscapes, uh, or, okay, some type of landscapes, then the algorithm learns that people are reacting okay to this type of, if I post this type of photos. If from time to time I decide to post a black and white image, because I'm not primarily black and white, I post rarely, then the algorithm will say, well, it's not something that your viewers are interested in, so I'm not going to promote that. Post again. It's basically saying, post again something that I know for sure your viewers will react okay. If you are interested about my uh, workshops or my instructional videos, you just go on the link from the description of this video. It's on my website and over there you're going to have all the details. Uh, and until next time, keep on photographing because it's the only way to get better.